What's up, Nation? I'm going to keep it about as real as I can with the Gerald McCoy. I think that he still can play. Yes, he's 33 years of age. And, of course, of course, he feels confident. I think that the Cowboys should give him a chance. That's just my thoughts on it. He's a veteran guy. He'll bring in some veteran leadership. But here is the problem. Hear me out before y'all say, man, he's long in the tooth. Let's move on from that situation. Everybody knows I want iron sharpen iron, steel sharpen steel. So don't give him the position. Let him fight claw for that role. I know it's a, he's a three tech. He's not going to give you one tech. He's not going to play on the edge at all. So he's going to be a guy that you insert and say, hey, fight for it. But do not give him the position. No. I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coach came out earlier this week and said, hey, everybody starts back at zero. And it's easy to say that, especially coming off of a Super Bowl, that everybody starts at zero. That's cool. I don't think that the Cowboys have the longitude nor the latitude as far as the coaching staff to have the type of cojones to reach out there and say, hey, everybody starts at zero. Because there's such a political situation with the Dallas Cowboys, it's crazy. Regardless, right? There's jerseys to be sold, seats to be sold as well. So, to, to be sold as well. So, it's just what it is. Cowboy Nation, there's nothing we can do about it but just sit back and see. If Dan Quinn can come in and make his present be heard, stomp around, and on top of that, let them know that, hey, I'm the coach of the defense. When what I say rolls, and it can't be a situation where it's the defensive guy go run to Jerry. It can't be a situation where the defensive coach uh, sit back and listen to what others have to say on this team like last year, saying that they're not comfortable doing a certain thing. Now, it's, it's okay for certain moments to have Q&As, feedback, but the coach got to establish that he is the end-all, be-all on that defensive side. Regardless of how you look at it, it got to start with the coach to come in and say, this is my system, and y'all going to have to get locked in. Y'all going to have to get ready for it. And there's no favoritism. I, I love the wording that Brian Broder said last year when he was on the show. He said, hey, there's no sponsorships. So these guys got to come in with the mindset, hey, I got I to gotta earn every rep. Especially, like, let's for, say, for example, Tristan Hill. He got to be sitting back learning. And he got to sit there and say, hey, I'm ready to play, coach. Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready. He got to fight for it. He can't be like, oh, I got a little, you know, you know, a little nick here and a little knack here. No, 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 no. And I can't practice that. No, 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 no. He got to get out there. And uh, shout out to, I believe it was John Mishota. I think he tweeted out earlier. And this is just, I guess, stats for out there for your mind. I think it's John Mishota. Y'all let me know who it is. But he, he said that the Cowboys... Oh, the Cowboys got the most players at their facility. Well, newsflash, they should. They should. You spend $3.5 billion, that's what it be, for a workout facility. And majority of the homes over there in Frisco area are nice, right? So when the guys come into town, hey, and they get there, you show them, hey, this is where the workout facility at, and this is where some houses are at. This is where we got state-of-the-art type of stuff. We need you to have your presence to showcase your ability and work on getting this Super Bowl. And this is our legacy, right? In the 90s, right? You know, they need to showcase all of that good stuff. And they need to have that mindset saying, oh, man, we still hungry for more. Man, we've been starving for 25 years or 26, give or take. So we got to get ready for it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this thing goes. Oh, oh, before I get into more details of it, hear me out, Cowboy Nation. I want McCoy to come after the draft. Right. After the draft. Not before. After. 
I want them to go into this particular draft with a clear mind of saying, okay, we're trying to better our best. There's no politic game. There's no, hey, we need to get this particular stat for this particular guy. No, go right into that thing and say, all right, cool. Let's get the best three tech we can find. Let's find the best one tech. Remember, build from the inside out. Build from the inside out. And that's what the Cowboys should be focusing on after they make whoever they make in the first round and the second round, then they need to start focusing in on, okay, how many guys we got? How many guys we know for sure that if we insert them into this system, they could push that pocket back, make it difficult for that quarterback to go through his reads. Quarterback looking here, looking there. Oh, I can't, I can't step up to make my throw. And truth be told, if those DBs are able to see that, they sit on that route. They'll be able to jump that play. They'll be able to get there where the ball's supposed to be at. But we need that type of execution to, to occur from the front. We need some penetrators, baby. We need somebody that can shoot through those gaps and not play around with their food. That's what we need. So, if we can't jump the gun too quickly... Why long? Why long? Well, after the draft, you know, there will be other teams getting rid of some of their guys, some of the guys that they feel that, hey, they was high on this particular person, they was high on that particular person. Now they're going to look at it and say, well, eh, we don't no longer need this guy, so we at least this guy. And truth be told, we could be able to reach in there and grab him. That could be a situation. So I just want to put that out too. So let's but I still would like to have McCoy for a cup of coffee, if you guys get what I'm saying. But hear me out. Hear me out, Cowboy Nation. Just don't rush it. Bring it on slowly. Let everybody know that, hey, your position is on the clock. Your position is on the clock. Nobody's giving anything. You got to earn it. You got to flat out earn it. Every inch. And that's what the Cowboys should be doing last year, the year before that, the year before that. <laughs> they should. Man, right now, Tristan Hill should be sweating, sitting there saying, man, I can't get injured this year. No. Gallimore should be like, yeah, that's my position. And McCoy, if they bring him on, he, he should be like, damn, these young bulls, man. I remember when I was 23. Oh, man, I remember when I was 28. But let me show him how I can still dominate, right? That should be his mindset, Cowboy Nation. I want to know how you guys feel of everything. Let me know. Post me your thoughts down below. How the Cowboys should look into this last wave of the free agency after the draft, right? And let me know how you guys feel what they're going to do in this particular draft, right? My name is Law Nation. Be sure to hit that like button, share this content. Uh, join the communities cat tab. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on uh, behind the scenes and things like that. So help the nation out in multiple ways. We're on multiple platforms. The best thing you can do to help this thing grow is hit that like button, share this content. Let a friend, neighbor, foe know where to go when they want to tune in to Cowboy Sports Talk and Beyond. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Go Cowboys. Let's go.